This isn't the first project to connect the XARM S1 from High Wonder to ROS2. I'm taking a slightly different strategy though, using a Raspberry Pi Pico and MicroROS to locally manage the XARM. The first step of this is to be able to monitor the state of the joints of the arm and publish these to ROS and model the XARM within URDF. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. This video feels on quite well-trodden ground for me, as what we're going to do is similar to my first steps with my uh, video turntable robot and DDD, my DIY dev droid. Creating a model of the robot within ROS2 and mapping joint movement to that robot. If you like the video and it helps your learning or your projects, why not buy me a coffee? Use the super thanks button below the video. And please do hit the like button on the video and subscribe for more. I do appreciate it. Now this is my fourth robot using ROS2 and MicroROS and the Pico. So I've learned there's a little bit of a process. And the process I go through is first of all to focus a, a little bit on the hardware, building and having something that I can actually work with. But in this case, it's a kit, so it's very easy. I just put it all together. Now, I don't need all of the hardware at the beginning. I can certainly iterate around this and do this in several phases. And even on this project, I plan to do that. Once I've got the hardware, then I, and I've tested it obviously, then I want a model of it. I want to model in rod space using something called URDF. So I can visualize it within the ROS2 ecosystem and I can confirm that what's happening in the ROS's model of the world is really what's happening in the real world. And that's really important. And that confirmation is what I'm going to do on the next step on this, which is about joints. And it's making sure that I can sense every joint on my robot and understand where its position is. Now, depending on the types of joints you've got, there are obviously different strategies. For the X-Arm, it's going to be really easy because we can actually read that directly from the servo. Once I can sense the joints, then I guess the next thing to do is to move them and to be able to instruct through ROS2 to move each of the joints individually. So that gives us a degree of control, but we're controlling it at a joint at a rather detailed point level. So the next level up is to be able to control this as a robot and to actually be able to give instructions for the robot to place its um, grabber at a particular location. And that requires us to do some uh, a lot more mass. And we'll talk about that certainly in a later video. And finally, we get into the world of planning where we can do things like, you know, if we were a mobile robot, we do things like navigation and mapping. Um, in a, an arm like this, we're going to do some planning around how we're actually uh, detecting where the object is, moving ourselves towards it, and how we're interacting with the world around us. In a previous video, I talked about the High Wonder X-Arm 1S and showed how I built that and was able to control it through Python. This time, I want to take us on to the next step. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Do you find soldering your PCBs hard? I certainly do. So why not use PCBWay to not only fabricate your PCBs, but assemble them too? PCBWay strive to be the most professional PCB manufacturer for prototyping and low volume production work in the world, which makes them a go-to place for makers like me to help me fabricate and assemble my low volume PCBs in their own in-house production services. PCBWay have lots of options for PCB types and coatings, along with instant quotation through their website for most services. They can help with project hardware too, through 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal work, or injection molding. Get some inspiration from their community project site or buy some ready-made modules from the module store. Go take another look at PCBWay today. In the last video, I connected the X-Arm directly to my laptop using a USB cable. 
and it was using a particular USB protocol that it's set up. It isn't serial over USB as far as I can see. It is actually a particular HIB set up for the XARM. And that makes it a little bit more complicated for me to work on and use from a Pico. Um, you, I'd have to put the Pico into host mode on USB, etc. Um, and actually, I want to use the USB on the Pico to connect into a Raspberry Pi for ROS2 communication. The alternative is to use the serial port on the XARM. And that gives us a nice connection. And there we've got ground, transmit, receive and 5 volts. The one thing about that connection, though, is that it is 5 volt logic. So remember, our Pico is 3.3 volts logic lines. So actually, you can't just connect the UART connect, uh, cables or UART ports coming out of iPico to the XARM. I need to actually do a conversion and take it up to 5 volts. And so I'm using a logic level converter to do that, um, which seems to work very well. I've done a short video talking about logic level conversion before, so you can go and have a look at that if you need a bit of a reviser about how that all works. We've got UART going out to our robot, and that's going through that logic level shifter to give us control over the XARM. And then over the uh, USB port, I'm going to talk micro ROS into the ROS2 ecosystem via a Raspberry Pi 4. And that's basically standard I.O. over USB. Now, I've cheated and used the ability that the SDK gives me to give me two standard I.O.s because I'm going to use another one over UART0 and that's going to give me telemetry so I can see uh, some debug information on the screen of what's going on. So that's quite a bit of communication coming out of our Pico. I've talked before about how to set up micro ROS and in fact I've got an entire playlist of videos talking about micro ROS and how that works. So go to have a look at those videos. They give you a lot more of the background that I'm not going to go into in this one. Let's talk about the model and how we've got a model within ROS2 to actually show how our um, XARM is going to move. All my code for this I will put on to GitHub in the repository RPI Pico XARM. Now for the URDF that describes a robot, I've actually cheated slightly and I've borrowed the definition from Alan Osland's model and his uh, repo here. He's taken a rather different strategy uh, to uh, ROS2 and working with the XARM. But his model of the in URDF of the XARM is excellent. And so I've uh, taken the liberty of using the MIT license to borrow that. Now, there are differences between his robot and mine uh, that some of his joints are around the different orientations, etc. So I've made a few little modifications to mine to make mine fit perfectly. And then I've got two launch files in my environment, which are going to launch up RViz on ROS2 to actually visualize this robot. Now I use two examples like this for a really good reason. Um, I want to actually first of all play with this model and make sure it works. So the display.launch.py file is basically going to launch RViz and it's going to launch a control to allow me to actually play with each of the um, joints and actually move them with a slider. And that gives me some ability to understand how is the model working, what value should my robot be sending to get the model to actually move correctly. And then the second one, uh, ROS2 launch XARM display only, that just gives me the display and that should get data pouring in from micro ROS, actually from the real robot. If you're new to URDF, there's a really great tutorial on it on the ROS2 pages within the ROS2 documentation. It gets you to go through a set of steps to actually build a, you know, a R2-D2 style droid uh, that you can then have move around, etc. So go and have a play with that tutorial if you've not done it. It's a really good one. Now we have that model of the ARM within ROS2 land. All you want is our XARM to actually be publishing its joint state to that model so that that model moves in the same way that the real ARM does. So that means publishing joint state messages. 
and I've talked about joint state messages before. They basically are a list of the joints and for us a list of positions for those joints. We could also do velocity and effort but those aren't so relevant for what we're going to do for now. We did exactly the same for the video turntable in my video turntable uh, video. That was a really simple robot with a single joint. Uh, now we've got six joints, but the principles are the same. And we did the same thing for my DDD, my DIY dev droid. Then we we're looking at motors and the rotation of the wheels rather than uh, the rotation of an arm. But the principles are the same. They are still joints and we still needed to publish their state so we could confirm the model inside of ROS2 is the same as the real world. It is actually fairly easy for us to do that because we're using bus servos um, on this model and those servos allow us to actually query what their position is and they will tell us where they are yeah, and their angle that they are set to. So it's easy to translate that and provide that data back into the world of ROS. The code I'm going to run on the Pico to actually interface and talk to the XARM is actually based on the XARM servo control uh, project by Chris Corson. Uh, he did the Python code that we were running last time to control the um, uh, arm. And he's also done an Arduino version of that code. And I've modified that Arduino code and ported it over badly to the Pico. It probably needs some cleaning up. But um, I was trying to, as far as possible, leave it as, as similar to his code. On the repo, all the code for the firmware to run on the Pico is in the firmware folder and in the source folder within there and uh, down into the exarm agents.cpp uh, file is where we are actually going to set up the um, messages and, and publish the messages to handle joint state. So here I'm setting up joint state and this is very similar to the code we've done before to do this. I'm just now putting in six, six items in this array or sequence and I'm setting their positions to zero and then I'm going to give each of those the different names for the joints on this robot. And those names are actually just named after the um, in sequence from XARM1 to XARM6 and which is the same actually as the servos there, servo1 to servo6. So I've put those names in there. I've put them in a slightly different sequence to their original name just because it made more sense for what I'm doing and I was starting from the base and working my way up. And then I've got some code here that publishes the position of uh, the, the uh, servos every um, few, well, I think I'm doing it four times a second actually. Um, and this basically goes through and talks to each of the servos and puts in their values. Now, I needed to do a little bit of math to match the servos to the um, arm position as described in ROS, so that we've got a little bit of math going on here just to, to make sure that those joints match. Um, for the gripper hand, that math is just slightly different as well, so I had to do that thing slightly different for servo one, which is what the uh, gripper hand is. But then we just actually publish this as a joint state message and that will go over. So let's have a look at that. So here on the left, you can see me echoing the joint state message. And on the right, we can see the robot as it goes through some uh, single joint motions. And you can see on the left, hopefully just about matched in sync, these are always a little bit hard to uh, re-edit these to be together, but you can see the values of uh, those joint positions change in real time as the um, arm goes through lots of motions. Um, here I'm going to uh, nearly tip the thing up. Um, I'm really going to have to get a bigger base that's uh, a little bit stronger for this uh, robot. It's um, quite capable of throwing itself on the floor. Uh, but you can see uh, their um, arm five moving. Uh, next, we're going through and do a move on arm four. Right, there you go. And then we can move on four back. 
So generally this confirms that everything moves as we think it should and we're actually getting the values back as we should from this message. So the next thing I guess to check is to actually look at this URDF model um, via Arviz running within ROS2. So I'm patching together um, the live video feed, the screen recording, actually the screen recording of two sessions so that I can try and give you two views of the robot, one um, on the side and one at the front. And you can see them moving and uh, showing all of the motions as the robot actually goes through them. And interestingly, as I watch this, I can actually see that there's a bug and it looks like the wrist is actually uh, 90 degrees out and uh, or inverted uh, in motion, which is annoying. I have to go and fix that. The use of bus servos, which can be queried for their angle, has made the task of publishing the joint state quite easy for this robot. The next step is getting those joints to move. You might guess from the videos that I've already shown that I'm a step ahead on that. I can bring you the full story very soon. So remember to subscribe so you don't miss it. If this video, or indeed any of my videos has helped you, why not buy me a virtual cup of coffee to say thank you? There's now the super thanks feature live on my video channel. Just click that button below the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss my upcoming videos. Goodbye for now.